Hello and welcome to our series on using Java to extract data from the JIRA APIs. In today's episode we'll be actually getting data. This is the climax. In previous episodes we set up our environment, we we implemented a login function, we parsed out the J session ID that we can use to authenticate. Today's where we use it. So uh, let's get started. In particular what do we need today? We need a J session ID that we'll use to authenticate. We need the path to our new web service, which everyone we're calling, and in, in fact, we'll finish up with, with one in particular. And then any query string parameters that we need to send along with it. Like I said, we'll try sending in a few requests to different REST API endpoints, and we'll look at their results. We'll end up using the Iona FX Business Intelligence Export Plugins API, because that will give us our results back in a very easy to parse format. It identifies any new or updated issues between given start and end dates, inclusively returns them along with all their work logs and comments and things. So to do that we need start and end dates. Actually we don't need them. Um, we'll code them up but they are optional. In practice uh, they're not usually used because if they're not provided they default to cover yesterday and in yesterday is what most BI exports collect uh, or even reports. If you're piping this directly into Excel or Power BI a lot of people just run a daily report first thing in the morning and get their visualization and, and start working. The defaults work just fine if we didn't provide any data but um, we'll give them a certain end date just to show how it's done. Back to our program here we have our main method and in main like I said we've got a few differences here so we're gonna need a new URL object here and str whoop, string how about string and we'll call this one our BI export URL because that's the service that we will finish up talking to and that is get business intel Gens export point oh message. Then we will also need our start and end dates. We'll call this analysis start date. And we'll just set that to 1 December 18 because that's the start of the test data that's in here. And now why is this end date? And we'll put that at let's say the end of the year, why not? All right, those are the three pieces of data that we need. Let's change this function call. Here we're going to need a base URL. We're going to need the path to tack onto it, the BI export URL. Um, we're going to need our J session ID, definitely. Um, is that the way I've camel cased it? Yep. And then our analysis, whoops. analysis start date so it can add these into the query string later. Like I said we're gonna try a few different REST APIs to get user data, get some issue data, I don't know. We'll try a few different ones. We'll just swap them out inside the function so we can see how they're called later on. So that's sending the data down. Now we have all of these nice things. Let's just copy them. And down in the declaration we will paste them and then type them, data type them. A string, base URL is a string, path is a string, G session ID is it, it's all strings. Now we can start coding this up and it will be pretty similar to the way we coded our login function with a few little differences. So we'll, we'll still add a try catch block. And inside our try catch block, we're still going to want our error handling like we've been using all along, so that each function is responsible for printing its own error message and giving its own name and returning instead of the, the good result, we return this string that says error. Um, and then we, we do want our debug output as well, so we'll copy that down here. And right before we return anything, we print it out. And this will be JSON data. There we go. We have our error handling in place and we have our debug output. We have some some other APIs that we could try. Where are we going to put those in? Well, let's swap them out later. First, we'll, we'll build the, the, the essential parts of this and then we can just swap out our URL later on. So first off, we need that URL, right? We'll create a URL object. That's a new URL. I put our base URL plus our BI 
export URL plus we need a query string now start date equals start date and then we need the end date as well so let's put in uh, ampersand end date equals plus our analysis end date now this is where we get to use the J session ID so we've got a string here that we're going to call cookie and that cookie is going to be J session ID equals and then very simply the J session ID that we passed in hmm um, well with that out of the way we can go ahead and create our connection uh, HTTP URL connection con is going to equal HTTP URL connection and we call our URLs open connection method so now we've created our connection but we haven't actually used it yet so we've got a chance to set some properties let's set the request method first request question request method oh, I think I'm getting tired of typing get um, so we're sending a get request then we're going to set a couple of request properties so we can put in our content type and our, our crucially our cookie with the J session ID in it so the first one we'll do is set request property content content type this is JSON so application JSON the next one we'll do is our uh, cookie. So set request property. How come those aren't the same length? There we go. Cookie. We'll set that to be our string, which was right here. That's it. Our connection's all set up. Uh, let's execute it and handle the response. So if con dot get response code is a method equals 200 then we've had a successful request then we will launch that buffered reader buffered reader br equals a new buffered reader and we'll feed that with an input stream reader so a new input stream reader Conduct get input stream. Do I get input stream as a method? There we go. Um, that should be our input stream. Let's remove one of those. Okay, so that's our, our buffer stream. So we've we've taken our input stream that we got back from our connection. We've read it with an input stream reader, and then we've buffered that into a buffered reader that has lines of data that we can read. So we've got our string output is just a little helper there. While output equals read line. While this read line does not equal no while there are lines to read we will read them into this string called output and then our json data response will plus equal output now once we've finished reading all the lines there are to read we can disconnect very simple that should be basically everything there without as many comments as i've put in previous videos and typo that I tried to fix by making another typo. There we go. So save all of that. Let's see. do that we would go up here and we will need to change our URL so let's come in out this URL we'll use a different URL still using the same J session ID we're still using a get so yeah so URL um, URL equals new URL and this time we will use our base URL but we will use one of these other API's like API to user 
and then API2 user will actually take a query string on it. So we will create a query string here with a question mark and we'll give it a username. And I have a user, a test user that I call Alex A. We just put in a different, a different path um, to our different API and given it the data that that particular API needs. So if we save that, go back and compile, still compiles, run it. Oh, there it is. Look at this. We have data on Alex A. His name is Alex A. His email address is Alex. We have his avatars. We have lots of different things here. That worked nicely. So let's try a different API. Um, how about the um, issue picker API? That one is, um, well, it's actually also API2. And then we just type in uh, issue picker. And that one is fun because it takes some JQL. It's called current JQL. It's a little funny. And we say assignee. And then here's where it's funny because we've already used the equal sign. We have to as kind of a uh, URI escape it, URI encode it. So instead of using equal sign here, I'll use percent %3D on the name admin. Um, so what this should do is give us a give us all the issues that are assigned to admin and save automate oh, there we go history search showing six of six matching issues we've got dev one we've got dev three dev. Um, so that's using the program here to get information from other APIs. Now, like I said, because I want the, the output from, from our uh, IonFX Business Intelligence Export Tool because it does so many things that make life easier once you're parsing the data and using it in a BI or a reporting application, we'll swap it back to the original one. Okay, we, we got our data out of JIRA with a script, so we can do it anytime we like. Uh, in the next episode, we'll extend this script to uh, convert the response into the CSV format. We'll populate that last function, which writes it out to file. I'll see you soon. Bye.